homeschool budgeting can be tricky, especially when you rely on one income for the most part, and that income isn't exactly like an established income of a doctor or a lawyer, or something else along the lines of a very affluent career. Our family has an everyday working class income, as most of you probably do. So today I figured that I would share some things about our budgeting for homeschool with some insight on how we save money for our homeschooling needs. Now, the great news is that there are other ladies willing to share their budgeting tips, tricks, and information through a collaboration created by Shanna from Making Everyday Magic. The playlist for this collab will be linked down below and shared at the end of this video, so be sure to check out those other ladies in this collab after watching my video. And for all the new people, please introduce yourselves in the comments with a fun fact about yourself or about your homeschooling style. I would love to talk further with you in the comments. All right, now on to the homeschool budgeting. So first I probably should share a small bit of information in order to paint a better picture of our family dynamics and homeschool style to understand our budget. I have two children, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. We are eclectic homeschoolers, which means we pull a little bit from every which way to create a homeschooling style that fits our needs on a day-to-day -day basis. We often do experience change while also keeping a natural rhythm to our day and our life in general. My kiddos are obviously very young, which means there is no pressure to hit the books uh, really hard and learning through play and fun are highly encouraged in our house and actual curriculum books are not necessary. But I personally do love buying curriculum as I have a teacher's heart and a history of working with children in a learning environment. So I love buying it. Um, to be quite honest. Like I said, most of our learning though is through fun, adventure, experiences, things like that, which we will get into. Um, so that is a pretty good overview of our homeschooling dynamics and how we operate every day. Over the past few years, I would usually buy a bulk amount of our curriculum for homeschool all at once, usually about in July. But this past year, we changed a lot about the way that we homeschool as the old way just wasn't working for our current needs. So instead of doing curriculum regularly, it became a more sporadic part of our homeschooling style. So yes, this past year, we didn't do a lot of homeschooling in the way that most people would think about it. Uh, it wasn't super structured. And because of this, all our curriculum is spread out as far as how much of it is actually done in the books. Uh, with that being said, I don't have a need to purchase a lot at once, which is really nice because it saves me a ton of money come July. So usually before this past year, I could spend about $500 um, or less. I would at least budget $500 in July for a bunch of new stuff all at once. But with more de-schooling for myself and unschooling for the kids, a lot of our resources are now spread out. And so they will be bought more sporadically throughout the year. So no large $500 purchase or less, like it's not always 500, that's just about what I estimate uh, per year around July for supplies for the next coming year. So not that much is spent all at once um, at this point in our schooling. It'll instead be spread out throughout the year when we eventually need it. So uh, if you're wanting to avoid a large bulk buy of products that gets expensive, try slowing down and letting the learning happen at a very slow and natural pace. With doing that, you should see, you know, things used more or less just at different points. So my kids are still learning plenty and a lot is getting done. It just looks less traditional. Um, and it takes a lot of pressure off of our learning experience. And just to quickly touch on it, where do the funds come from for that 500 or less dollars? That was usually coming from a savings that we had already built throughout the year, not including our monthly homeschool budget. Now, beyond the bulk purchasing of curriculum, we do make a monthly budget for our family, which does include a portion of money being uh, specifically dedicated to our homeschooling needs. I try to keep field trips and homeschooling in two separate budget columns, but sometimes they do combine when I need to pull funds from one to the other. I will address our field trips and budget next, but first I want to talk about our general homeschool funds in the budget. And even before that, I want to say that if you aren't budgeting money for homeschooling or for your life in general, you really should, especially if you find yourself struggling to make ends meet. With a budget, you can assign every last penny to do something, and if you stick to it, you could find that you do have some money left over by the end of the month. Or at the least, you could find yourself managing money better. But the hope is that with budgeting, you find freed up funds to spend on your homeschooling needs. 
We allow an amount of funds to be used for homeschool each month, and the actual amount that we use can vary depending on other needs we have to tend to in any given time frame. Usually it can range between zero to $100, okay? So yes, that's right. <laughs> it fluctuates quite a lot. And sometimes I just have to go the month without any new purchases. Or sometimes I find creative ways to meet my money needs to purchase whatever may um, be needed or wanted for homeschooling. And regarding my own income, I do have videos uh, regarding my income on my channel. I keep that as a cushion, not really as spending, and I don't often pull from it. Usually I can find something to sell around the house or I can go to a thrift store and find something that I can flip for more money. Now there is an average I probably spend monthly, which would be about $25 to $50, which is quite a good range still. And if there is any money remaining at the end of the month left in that budget that I don't spend, I can either save it to go towards another month or reallocate those funds back into our general budget into an area that does need more money. So when it comes to our field trips, I believe that we do quite a bit more um, compared to many of the other families that homeschool. And the good thing is that I do often find plenty of free or ridiculously cheap field trips. It isn't often that I have to shell out a lot of money for a field trip, uh, though in the future I could see that changing with the plans that I personally have and the vision I have for where we're going with uh, homeschooling adventures and field trips. Most of our trips are within the state, but I'm not afraid to travel um, around our state on the outside border to neighboring states uh, to find really cool places or things to visit on a regular basis. We also do rely quite a bit on our memberships to places that we will, we know will give our children a lot of learning opportunities time and time again, where we can just keep repeatedly going. We hold memberships to three of our local attractions that offer plenty of learning and in a wide variety of subjects like science, art, history, physical education, reading, math, and life skills. So yes, getting our memberships to those places may cost us anywhere from like $100 to $200 up front, uh, but they are well worth it when we go enough times that we make our money back. So keep that in mind, memberships may cost a lot up front, but you do save a ton of money in the long run as long as you are using those memberships on a very regular basis. I make sure to calculate, um, obviously just simple math. I take the membership and divide it by the amount of, it would cost us for one day of admission. That tells me how many times I need to go out to at least to make my money back, which is usually two to three times. And we go back to those places way more than that. Not to mention that those memberships usually come with things like discounts, member only events, sneak peeks for anything new happening and things like that. Every now and then we do choose a field trip that requires admission fees and the most we spent per person to go on a field trip regarding admission was probably about $30 per person. Now, usually the biggest cost to consider is gasoline, especially right now while there is a major inflation in prices. Field trips are mostly always planned ahead and rarely spur of the moment uh, when it has cost and we plan and budget for that trip ahead of time. Okay, so as you can see, budgeting is extremely important to us. Uh, we also save a lot of money by doing things like packing meals and snacks and drinks um, instead of buying things at the field trip. I've also had to learn to say no a lot. So uh, sometimes I do say yes, but often my kids hear me say no to all the extra souvenirs, the shiny objects that they wanna buy, the gift shops uh, while on the trips, things like that. So be okay with saying no to a lot of those things or allocate a very small amount of funds. Usually at those gift shops, you can find things for kids for $5 or less. So if you do wanna give them money to spend, tell them they have $5, $2, whatever it is, and they can find things along the lines of that. There usually is always at least something they can get for that price. But be okay with saying no if you don't have the $5. It's totally okay. They'll be fine. I also know it's possible that someone is watching this video and is disheartened knowing uh, that they can't afford to do the things that we do on our budget. I do consider my budget to be quite modest, okay? We don't have a ton of money uh, every month to spend specifically on homeschool, but I do know that um, it is also a privilege to spend the amount that I do and not everyone can and I don't take that for granted. If you cannot afford anything that I am describing in this video, that is okay. Uh, work with what you have and find the joy in it, to be honest. Our children don't need all the shiny objects and things and experiences. They honestly just need us to be present. 
So make a budget, do the best you can. Also, while we're kind of on the subject about budgeting and uh, homeschooling, I'd love to hear how you make room in your budget for fun things for homeschool without spending a lot of money. Uh, so feel free to share tips, tricks, and stories in the comments below and help other homeschoolers out that maybe need help in this area. And I look forward to reading what you want to share in the comments regarding this. Another thing that I recommend is pay up in price only for curriculum if you know it is absolutely worth it. For me, the only curriculum that I feel like personally is worth paying up for at this point in our learning is All About Reading. Um, All About Learning Press, they make wonderful curriculum that I swear by. I could honestly replace any other curriculum if needed that we use, uh, but AAR All About Reading is my absolute favorite curriculum and the only one that I'm willing to pay up for without hesitation. Everything else I usually do buy a second hand for the most part, or I find cheaper options like Explode the Code books. Uh, they are really great workbooks. There are plenty of very affordable options out there for you. And I did share a video on how I buy curriculum for less. I will go ahead and link it down below and at the end of this video for you to check out if you would like. And that is a general overview of how we personally homeschool and spend our money. And if you would like to know more about our homeschooling style, click this video on the top right here. If you would like to see the other ladies and what they have shared about their budget, click this bottom video over here. And I'll see you guys over in my videos. Have fun homeschooling. Bye.